Welcome to the next episode of eSphere Breakroom Chats. I'm Shobhik Bhutani, Product Marketing Manager at VMware, responsible for uh, vSphere, AIML, and DPUs. In this series, we bring VMware and partner experts to discuss VMware's vSphere and cloud products. Uh, these fabulous experts also share their backgrounds, industry trends, general tips for IT, uh, and our customers, IT experts and our customers. In today's episode, particularly excited to talk to Philip O'Leary, uh, technical marketing architect of VMware. Philip and I worked together really, really close last couple of months or so, uh, working on a pretty exciting thing, um, the vSphere Update 1 that we just announced. Uh, we have F Philip is one of our experts on vSphere. Uh, we're going to discuss a specific capability called vSphere configuration profiles that uh, we're announcing is going to go GA. Uh, and how it create you know improves lifecycle management. Right? Welcome, Philem. Thanks, Shobit. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. Uh, so very excited about this episode today, Philem. We worked together so close last couple of months or so, and it's been pretty cool to kind of learn from you and you know hear about different things you've been driving at VMware. So for the audience, can you just kind of talk about uh, what you're doing at VMware, right? Uh, a little bit about your background and most, most importantly, what's your favorite beverage, buddy? Yeah, thanks, Shobit, for that introduction. So I've been with VMware for almost 12 years now, and I first started working in our support organization in global support, focusing on core vSphere, resolving, resolving all those customer problems um, that come up time and time again. Um, I then later moved into our education space where I was involved in developing the vSphere curriculum for our customer facing and partner training. And I developed our first dedicated course in the vSphere with Tanzu space. Currently, as you said, I'm now working in our technical marketing organization and I'm leading our vSphere releases. Uh, my favorite beverage is pretty niche to Cork. Um, it's called Tanora. It's a, a tangerine based soft drink. Um, I'll have to pick up a, a bottle or a can and, and ship it to you. I don't think we uh, we export to the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty cool, man. Um, like, there's a couple of I got, and I got to do the same from India. There's a lot of drinks still that are very native to India that we don't get in the United States or anywhere else for that matter. At least, not seen anywhere in Europe either. Mm -hmm. So I have to remember to do the same, man. So, uh, <clears throat> so very cool to kind of hear about your background. Now let's jump in here a little bit about what we're here to talk about, right? As we know, lifecycle management is a very important part of business continuity, uh, software, hardware, network, and the technologies that support business operations um, are critical parts of um, the assets to kind of keep businesses running. Uh, updates, upgrades, things like that usually take a lot of time. Um, right? Even though they're extremely critical, right? And have to be done. Now, we hear about the pain points customers have sometimes in maintaining their infrastructure. Uh, you know, you work a lot more closely with um, uh, with admins, right? So I wanted to kind of hear your experiences, what you're hearing from admins about lifecycle management and their pains. Yeah, so having spent a lot of time working in support, I'm not any stranger to the pain points that our customers experience, and that's no different working in, in technical marketing. And specifically around the topic of host and cluster configuration management, the biggest pain point would be the area of scale, right? How can I easily manage the configuration across a large number of hosts and clusters? Now we have a good technology today in host profiles and it can satisfy those needs. However, it was time to take a more modern approach to how we manage cluster configuration at scale. Another pain point is managing the overhead of that host profile and its association to the respective hosts and clusters. This overhead can be time wasted trying to manage that association and it's time that could be spent better uh, performing more important tasks. The scalability is one thing I heard. Right, and then the general management of time involved, right? Even even if you're not scaling, just to keep configurations up to date, right, for the entire cluster, finding where remediation, you know, drifts have had happened. So all can be very time consuming. If I heard those two three things right, yeah. Great, 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 fantastic. So <clears throat> now, with that, you know, last few. Um, you know, releases of vSphere, 
we are, uh, you know, VMware has taken a lot of in interest in the, making sure that we, the admins have a better experience with lifecycle management, right? Can you elaborate on this new functionality that's gone, that we're announcing to go GA, uh, vSphere configuration profiles and how it helps admins Sure. So we started our, our let's say, our, our lifecycle revamp in vSphere 7 with the introduction of vSphere Lifecycle Manager. And we think that's made a, a huge difference in making it far easier to manage the ESXi versions and partner add-ons for uh, clusters and hosts. And in vSphere 8 with vSphere configuration profiles, we're taking a similar approach to the cluster configuration side of things. So on the overhead that I mentioned of managing multiple host profiles and their respective associations to hosts and clusters, vSphere configuration profiles removes that overhead because the configuration is all self-contained within the cluster object itself. You don't have to worry about attaching a host profile to a cluster. And vSphere configuration profiles is closely related to vSphere Lifecycle Manager. They both work in tandem with each other. For example, vSphere configuration profiles will automatically check that the cluster image is compliant before making configuration changes. And this helps reduce the complexity of lifecycle management, reduce the time spent manually checking compliances when we're performing those lifecycle tasks or applying configuration. Now, the concepts of drift and remediation that we're familiar with in Lifecycle Manager are also used in vSphere configuration profiles. So there's no new terminologies you need to learn. Familiar concepts are applied to a different area of Lifecycle Management. And we built this framework for cluster configuration management with vSphere configuration profiles. And we're going to continue investing in that framework and look to build upon it with each new release. Awesome. Fantastic. So uh, moving on, uh, we already have host profiles, right? Capability you today, which does similar things. Uh, how does this capability compare to host profiles? Yeah, so that's a great question. And vSphere configuration profiles is just a new approach to solving a familiar problem. Right? We want to have uh, an easy way to apply configuration across all our hosts and all our clusters. With vSphere configuration profiles, we expose modern REST APIs so that customers who like to automate things at scale or develop custom workflows have the ability to do that. The configuration specification itself is defined in the JSON format, which is far easier to work with, far easier to read compared to the XML-based format that mm -hmm. host profiles uses. And under the hood, vSphere configuration profiles leverages all the work that we've done up, up until now on standardizing how ESXi stores its configuration. There's also some increased flexibility with vSphere configuration profiles compared to host profiles. So you still have the main profile itself of host agnostic configuration and all the host unique aspects like IP addresses and host names, but it also allows for what we call a host override. For example, if you need certain configuration items to be slightly different between hosts that exist in the same cluster. Awesome, so more flexibility right, and being able to override certain things, declarative model, um, you know, so pretty cool, right? So huge upgrade over what we had earlier. Uh, <clears throat> now, I think you also have a demo you wanted to share with the audience. Can you please just uh, walk us through that? Yeah, I do. Let me just share my screen. Okay, <clears throat> so here we are with our familiar vSphere client. We've got a cluster here with three hosts. And we want to we want to see how vSphere configuration profiles can help us make sure that our cluster is got the configuration we want. So I'm just going to go to the configure tab and scroll down to configuration under desired state. Notice I didn't have to go to a separate area of the UI like with those profiles. Let's go to the compliance tab and we can see that we've got two hosts that are out of compliance right and um, they're they don't have the desired configuration. That, that we want. We want all our hosts to have a have the same sort of configuration across the board. And in host three here, we can see that there's some uh, VM kernel NIC IP addresses are, are misaligned. NTP isn't configured. Maybe just somebody turned that off for, for whatever reason. And in host two, we're missing uh, some port groups and again, uh, VM kernel interface. So easiest way to, to get all our hosts back to the desired uh, state is to click the remediate button. 
And there'll be some pre-checks here, again, just to check that the hosts are in, a, are in a correct state that we can apply the configuration. This is typically making sure that the, the build of ESXi is uniform across the board, that we're compliant in the vSphere lifecycle manager state. So we can see here that the pre-checks have passed and there's nothing really to report on. We can review the host impact, so it'll tell us exactly what we're going to do. You know, depending on the configuration change, the host will or will not be put into maintenance mode. Just for the sake of this demo, I've already put the host into maintenance mode just to make things a little bit quicker for us. So I've hit remediate, and the uh, configuration now will be pushed down to those two ESXi hosts to make the necessary config changes to bring them back up to, up to the desired state for the cluster, make all our hosts have the same configuration across the board. And in a couple of seconds, that'll be applied. And we'll do another compliance check again, just to verify that all our hosts are compliant with the desired state of the cluster. And there we have it in just a you know, couple of clicks and you know, maybe 60 seconds, we've remediated these, these two ESXi hosts, brought their configuration um, drift back into compliance with the desired state of the cluster. Awesome. So, you know, a couple of clicks and the entire cluster is basically checked, right? Going through the automatic process. You know, if you find anything that's remediated, that needs to be remediated, it kind of gets that done. Now, I think one thing to know for the audience, right? We haven't talked about it, uh, or it's probably more complex here to show for the lab itself is if you're spinning up new clusters, it's very easy to replicate the entire host configuration, the desired host configuration, right across the entire new cluster as well with this capability. Uh, exactly. You can you can enable this right from the get-go, even before you add any host to your cluster. Fantastic. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for the for the lab, Phelan. This was a really, really cool discussion. I uh, really appreciate your time uh, walking us through this, man. No worries. Uh, happy to happy to show any of the the new new and interesting technologies that we're we're releasing with Beast for Eight Update One. Awesome. So uh, thank you so very much, Philip. Again, really a lot of fun talking to you today. Uh, and with that, we come to the end of this episode. If you like this, join in for the next one. This is your host, Shobhit Bhutani, signing off. Have a fabulous day, evening, night, and week. Bye bye. Till next time. Mm -hmm.